Hey guys, welcome back to more real estate neighbor drama stories. In this video, my crazy neighbors think they own my home and then stole my pool. Let's dive right into the video. And the first one starts like this. I feel ridiculous even writing this. It seems like something that just should not be a problem or cause any confrontation in the real world, but apparently I would be very much mistaken. I have owned my home for nearly 10 years now and as with most homes that have a backyard you own that as well, I feel like that is something everyone knows and should not really be a problem. And it wasn't until my new neighbors moved in. A couple moved next door and they seemed lovely and friendly when we first greeted each other. Me and my wife had gone over and popped in for a chat after they had settled. However, it was a couple weeks later when we started noticing that our new neighbors would give us very nasty looks whenever they saw us, even worse ones when we smiled in their direction. We thought we were just being paranoid at first, thinking that giving looks to people was something you don't do past high school, but once this started happening nearly every time we saw them, we knew something was up here. For some added context, our backyard is lovely, we have spent most of our time living here maintaining it and have added a gorgeous pool, which I'll be honest did cost a bomb. So it's not surprising that neighbors may feel a little envy, but we never expected it to come out in the way it did for our new neighbors. Hello, how can I help you? I asked, opening the door, which had been very aggressively knocked on, to see the new couple at my door. The pair did not look most pleased. That pool is causing too much noise. Oh, what noises? I asked, really not sure that pools made a great deal of noise. Don't play dumb, it's all the splashing and shouting when you're in it, the husband yelled. We have not been in the pool for weeks, when do you even hear these noises? I panicked wondering if someone was maybe breaking in to use my pool. The pair suddenly looked a bit sheepish. Okay, well, we have not actually heard these noises yet, but we know they will come along with a pool. What? So you're complaining about noises that are not even there? I asked what on earth were they on about. Well, we know that it will be loud when we use it, so we have just come over to bargain with you. We will let the noise slide if you give us unlimited access to your pool. Perhaps we will create a door in the fence. The woman shrugged, as if she was just asked for a cup of sugar. They could not be serious. What? I'm sorry, but no. If the noise is such a problem, just come around and tell us after you can actually hear it. As for access to our pool? No, I'm sorry, but it's not a public pool. Public pool? Don't act like we are just a general public. We are your neighbors. Who do you think you are? The woman demanded. Look, I sighed. I don't want to cause any problems. We'll make sure that we keep the noise down whenever we use the pool, because unfortunately you cannot have access to it. If we ever throw a pool party, of course you guys can have an automatic invitation, but not unfiltered access to our property. Listen, the husband laughed. If you don't give us access to that pool, we will tear down that fence and come and use it anyway. Try and stop us. He then balled his hands into fists. Are you threatening me? I asked, wondering how this all got so out of hands. Look, you guys should leave. We can discuss this at a later date, preferably after you've calmed down. I shut the door and headed inside to tell my wife about the encounter, still unsure how things got so out of hand. For the next few weeks, we did not hear anything of our neighbors. They did continue to give us nasty looks, but didn't do anything rash. That is until one afternoon, when me and my wife were driving home from a day down at the beach. Everything looked fine from the outside, but once we entered our home and headed to the kitchen, which looks over onto the backyard, we noticed very quickly that the fence had been completely knocked down and rebuilt around our pool. So basically that it was part of our neighbor's section now. We saw sad neighbors in the pool, splashing around and having a great time. They were drinking and spilling lots of sad drink into the pool. What's going on here? I demanded, storming over and leaning over the badly rebuilt fence. Well, we did warn you, the husband stated with a laugh, shrugging his shoulders. So you thought you would just trespass on my property, destroy some of it, the fence, and get away with it? The pair rolled their eyes at each other. Look, we moved the fence so therefore it belongs to us now. We literally own your property and pool. Sorry. What? That is just not how property laws work. Are you out of your mind? My wife asked, coming out from inside. Great, now there's two of them. The husband moaned whatever that means. We're gonna call the cops if you don't get out and you'll be paying for a new fence. I stated. We did not respond and headed inside to call the cops. 
Over the phone they informed us that the best thing we could do is gather evidence of what they have done as well as our property records etc. so that when they do come all the evidence is ready. So that's what we did. For a few weeks we took photos of our neighbors constantly using our pool that was clearly part of our land. We also filmed audio of any confrontation we had with them, getting them to admit to moving the fence as of course they had no idea we were filmed. Legally, if one member of the conversation is consenting to the recording, it is not seen as as unlawful. We gathered all of our property records as well, which took some digging. During this entire time we watched our neighbors slowly dirty the pool and not maintain it properly. We did see them try, which was hilarious by the way. For hours they tried scooping out the debris and cleaning the beer infested water, but nothing worked. Clearly it was becoming inconvenient for them, if only they knew how bad this next stage would be for them. A week later we called the cops again and had someone come around to look at our evidence. They brought with them a property surveyor and when the couple saw the cops they knew they were done for. What is all this? They asked sweetly as they swam in the gross pool. Just doing a quick property survey to see where the lines fall, the surveyor stated, walking around the perimeter and measuring while checking on our papers. He nodded at the officer in confirmation of our statement. Look guys, what you've done here is obviously out of order. I'm not sure why you thought you would get away with it, but I have all the evidence I need here that you don't own this pool or land and that you move the fence without the owner's permission. The officer stated, what? That's… no! We definitely had permission, right? The wife stated, batting her lashes at me. I shook my head, so the officer continued, you will receive a letter in a few days stating what your orders are, but I can tell you in person first, you'll be paying for this fence to be replaced as well as the standard trespassing fine or even more. You will also be paying for the maintenance and cleanup of the pool. Furthermore, if you step foot in this property again, you'll be arrested. The couple, rightfully so, looked incredibly shocked and scared and quickly got out of the pool, muttering some form of acknowledgement before scurrying inside and slamming the door. They did receive said letter and paid all the fees to us, said fees being a nice little bonus before they decided to turn to Twitter and have a rant about us. Nobody was on their side though, just to add to their embarrassment. They ended up moving out, which was great as it was a little awkward, so we ended up getting what we wanted and the new fence looks lovely. I just wish we could have avoided this whole mess by not being stuck with these entitled neighbors in the first place. And the next one is a great malicious compliance story. And if you've watched until here and enjoy these property dispute stories, then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we are getting closer and closer to 130,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. My girlfriend was having issues with her micromanaging boss and made me remember this orchestrated malicious compliance we did back around 2003 or 2004 when I was working for a consulting company. The client we were working for was a bank that had us working from the minus two basement which consisted on a warehouse full with ATM replacement parts and another retrofitted warehouse with desks for us. You can imagine the tie flickering neon lights, ventilation columns, only thing resembling a window was a poster of a window the consulting company hung up on one wall. Cell phones were not that common back then, internet was kind of on but everything was blocked because of the bank's firewall, we had to access Google via an IP address. Working there was hard, only distraction was having a talk around the water cooler and going upstairs to get a coffee. We were like 30 people split into two big teams doing COBOL and one smaller one doing web.net and whatever else somebody asked the manager to deliver. I was part of the smaller one, the client asked us to track how long it took to finish each task. This was handled by each of the three team leaders and people had a little bit of leeway on how to report hours spent. So each team member would tell the team leader whenever a task was finished and how long it took. It worked pretty well because team leaders were chill and the guys were serious and did not slack too much. The manager, let's call him micromanager since he was all about micromanaging but also because he was really short, calls me one, I was kind of jack of all trades back then, and my team leader, TL as a team leader but also he was really tall, so too long one day and says, look guys, I have a feeling we are not working hard enough. I need to be able to report the exact amount of time we spent on each task to the client. I want you to have some kind of software so people can input the time they spent on each thing. TL tries to explain that the current system in place works rather well and there's no need to change the status quo, that the numbers were accurate and such. Micromanager says that it's not enough, that people are wasting time and he wants accurate tracking. 
I was like 22 or 23 at that time, first job, but TL had a knack for malicious compliance, so he designed the system. It consisted of a little traffic light in the taskbar, red meant that you were assigned, yellow meant a temporary stop and green meant unassigned. In order to change from one color to the other, a pop-up appeared and you had to input the reason for the change. Then we created a web page that summarized and presented the data anonymously. It also had an export button so Micromanager could check and use it to report himself faster than how the team leaders were doing it. At least that was Micromanager's idea. So we installed this in every computer and showed how it worked to Micromanager. He was happy and told us to explain the system to the team in order to start the trial run of the idea right away. So we did TL gathered every single team member and told them that Micromanager wanted an exact tracking of each one. He repeated time and time again the word exact like probably 50 times in 5 minutes. He also said that the next day would be a trial run for the software. So then 30 team members understood right away and complied in an exact way. Here is an example on some of the things I remember. I might remember some of this once a little embellished, it's been a while, as highlights from the report with time added up after the trial day. Arrival, taking coat off, no hanger available, tried to hang it on top of the other coat, both fell, 5 minutes, cuff attack, had to get a glass of water, 5 minutes, joke, morale booster, 2 minutes, lost track of thought, realized I was looking at the poster of a window instead of a window. 3 minutes, gone to the toilet, this was like 400 minutes or so, 30 people, 2 times in the day or so, discussing last night's football match, 50 minutes, air too cold, had to ask maintenance to up the temperature, 4 minutes. Somebody asked temp to up the temp, now everybody is sweating, had to ask them to lower the temp, 2 minutes. Inputting change of state and traffic light app, something like 2 hours in total. And the list kept going and going and going. The real data was also there, but it was practically unusable. Before leaving the office, TL called his team and we had a really good laugh reading the list. The next day when we arrived, micromanager called TL, told him something and TL asked me to uninstall the traffic light app from every computer. And the next one is a really good petty revenge story. Far too many years ago, I worked in a retail plumbing store. There were two of us that worked the counter. The other guy, Tim, was generally speaking a very nice, well-mannered guy, always polite to everyone. He worked the opening shift and I worked closing. Over the back fence of our parking lot was a chemical plant that manufactured fertilizer. They were the worst neighbors in so many ways, but one of the most obnoxious things they did was to have trucks arrive with various chemicals for their plant and they would just dump raw powdered crap into the parking lot and have their workers with no protective gear start shoveling it into bags. We would have to literally hose our cars off to be able to see to drive home at night. I am just amazed that I never saw anyone working there with an extra hand growing out of their forehead. But then one day a bigger than usual truck, a tractor trailer, was parked up next to the gate into our back parking lot. Close enough that Tim couldn't get past it to get to the back door without actually climbing over it. The alarm system was configured such way that there was only a delay to disarm it before it went off and called the police if you came in the back door. Open the front door and we get charged by the police department for a false alarm. So then he goes into the office next door and politely, and he was always polite, asks the driver to move it. The driver's response was, go F yourself. Okay, well, that's anatomically unlikely, but still waters run deep. Effing you is certainly possible, so in climbing over the truck to get in, he notes that it's parked in a fire lane and then calls the cops. Who hated this company as much as anyone for good reasons, but that's another story. So they showed up quickly and told the driver, there's a tow truck on the way, you have until it gets here to move your truck. The truck was moved quickly, but that's only the beginning of those still waters. There's still the sharp rocks at the bottom. From that day on, every time they unloaded one of their trucks onto the asphalt, he would call the fire department to handle hazmat situations. The first couple of times their excuse was, well the truck was broken and this was the only way we had to unload it. About the third time they had started writing citations, expensive citations. After a few more times I came back from lunch one day to find a fire truck parked in the alley and guys in hazmat suits taking core samples out of their parking lot. They apparently came within a few parts per million of having to pay to have the entire parking lot dug up and hauled off to a toxic waste dump. 
which in California would probably have cost them seven figures and it's federal law, so their friends and the city government couldn't protect them. But they were never rude to Tim again. Once we, or rather the kid who worked in the detailing shop we shared a building with, taught their stupid Doberman to stay out of our parking lot, they were still annoying, but not nearly as much so. And now let's move on to the next story. It starts like this. I've never been the type of person who complained about anything at all. Living in Serbia usually meant I didn't have reason to complain anyways, especially since I've always been a traditional farmer. And by the way guys, I had to censor something out there because there was personal information that I didn't want to reveal on YouTube. So anyway, my life is fairly peaceful, my house and the land around it have been passed down in my family for generations. Just like how my father taught me how to farm in the large area around the house, his father had taught him as well. That being said, we always kept up with new methods of farming as well. The cattle shed is equipped with the latest technology to ensure that the cows can live comfortably in the right temperature throughout the year. Winters here get very harsh, so it was very important to ensure the shed has a large heater. Even the milking process was now automatic thanks to new machines. Also, I was not the only farmer in my town. The soil here is very fertile, due to which there has always been a massive farming community present. And yes, we are all supportive of each other. And sure, there were some disputes while selling our produce of the year, but it was always be swiftly resolved. However, everything changed drastically when Horden, a lawyer from the city, moved in next to me. The land next to mine was much bigger than my own. It also had trees that were easily older than me and about 10 acres were filled with these trees. The man who previously owned the land was not a farmer, but he knew the potential it held. We had a word of mouth agreement where I would take care of his plot and in exchange he would never have to spend any money on groceries or produce. He knew that if I did not farm at his plot it would be a waste of fertile soil since his job demanded too much time to be able to utilize the land to its fullest potential. It would have gone barren had it been left alone. Additionally, I would collect enough wood from the trees to keep our houses warm throughout the year. It gets very expensive to buy firewood externally, so this too benefited him. However, the trouble began when he sold his house to a rich lawyer who decided to move from the city due to the increasing competitiveness in the law field. He figured it would be easier to find clients in a town full of people that had old money and no lawyers. Lack of local lawyers also meant it would be easier to scam people out of their money by using the law as an excuse. His very first week after moving in, he managed to extort money from Tom, the farmer that lived across from us. He filed a lawsuit for some bogus reason along the lines of noise pollution. Everyone knew that the real reason was that Tom is an immigrant and Horden was clearly bothered by it. It was painfully obvious that he had pinned me as his next target when I approached him about the old agreement I had with the previous owner. I explained to him how it would benefit him since it would be much colder than the city so he would definitely be needing a lot of firewood. It would have also helped to restore the goodwill of the community with him. However, he lost his cool much before I got to the part about returning Tom's money back. Winter was never the best time for crops and losing his money in November would have made things very hard for him. Horden thought it was illegal that I would look after fields that did not technically belong to me. He decided to make it his life's mission to bring justice because he assumed that all the years I had previously farmed at his land meant that he was at a loss. He assumed that I basically encroached his land for so many years and now he was entitled to my land. The very next day I found a letter that was supposedly from the city council stating that farmers are not allowed to live anywhere near that's less than 15 kilometers away from the city's perimeter. It instantly seemed suspicious but just to be sure I checked with the other farmers about whether or not they received the letter too. It was no surprise that they hadn't, I knew it must have been Horden who forged a letter from the city council. My mistake was assuming that he just meant it as a prank to scare me, but things got progressively worse after I simply ignored the letter. In the following week, the police visited my farm numerous times due to complaints about noise. The machinery in the farm usually makes a buzzing sound when they are being operated, but my farm is big enough to ensure that no one else is affected by the sound, but that's not what the cops had been told. Upon inspection, they immediately determined it was a false complaint and left. When they were called again due to the mooing of the cows, even the officers were visibly annoyed about having been called over for something so trivial. 
They were fully aware of the fact that this was a farming area and that these sounds were the norm. It was not very hard to ignore all of this considering it did not disrupt my day very much. However, this pissed off Horden even more. He then barged into my house and threatened to file a complaint to the IRS for tax evasion. And by the way, Ripe Stars, in this case I actually asked OP because I was confused that he mentions the IRS. And I'm pretty sure the IRS or the equivalent in Serbia has a different name. However, OP said that there are so many Americans on Reddit that he simply used the word IRS to not confuse them. So either way, I had always been very meticulous about my taxes, so when I brought out all the relevant files in a matter of minutes, he was speechless and stormed out of there angrily. I watched him walk out to the balcony and pull out his phone. He quickly dialed and his tone changed immediately when the receiver picked up. He sounded very panicked when he stated that he was being held hostage and then proceeded to tell them my address. He even told them that I was attempting to burn him alive. I rushed out to call him out on this blatant lie, but he had gotten off call by then. He ran towards the hay kept aside for the cattle and pulled out a lighter. Before I knew it, the cattle shed was catching fire. Additionally, the fire spread quickly further and reached a part of my field. I panicked, seeing my crops going up in flames. I raced to the water hose and tried dousing the fire, but the flames grew bigger. Fortunately, his call worked in my favor as the police arrived immediately and brought a fire truck along with them. They were confused about the situation but focused on the immediate threat first. Once the fire was out, they put us both in cuffs to figure out exactly what had happened. Horden's hysteria made it very hard for them to understand what was actually going on. Just then, Tom arrived at the scene. He had heard Horden's truck pull up the infrastructure of my house and had come over to find out why. This was when he was setting fire to the hay and Tom managed to film it on his phone. When the police saw the video, they booked Horden for destruction of property and for endangering my life. The only time I had to see Horden after that was at the court hearing when I testified. He was locked up for a long time after that and no one was happier than Tom and I. And yeah guys, with this we have reached the end of the video. However, if you cannot get enough of my content, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. And also check out my podcast by searching for Ripe Stories on Spotify, Amazon, Audible and other podcast platforms. You will often find exclusive episodes and early access to new content. Furthermore, please check out my Patreon by going to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube or my YouTube membership program for even more exclusive of stories. Thank you so much and I will see you again tomorrow.